We are folks, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. We are going to take a godly look at the book of Philippines. Now, Paul the Apostle went to this place at Philippi and started a church. Then he went off and he spent many, many days in prisons. Why Paul was put in prisons is beyond any of us to know. But I do believe that God had prepared the people in the prisons for Paul to be there. They had heard of him, this Saul of Tarsus. They knew of him. And for some reason, uh, the, the place where he was able to get parchment, to get pen, to get a, a somebody to scribe for him, uh, to be able to write so many of the epistles they call the prison epistles from prison. And as he was in prison, he, he did not consider prison a place of a detainership that was evil. He considered it a place to go to school. It perhaps was the best place to be uh, where you could have a candle through the night, where you could have a light, where you could have a little room and you could have a little light and you could uh, scribe uh, during the night and uh, uh, do things and during the day. And uh, perhaps it was the better place to be in a sense of the word because he made peace with all that were around him. Anybody who was around him, it was not a war. He was not in there uh, having fisticuffs and fights with those people in jail. He was winning them to Jesus. He was a meek and mild man, yet he was a man of sternness, a man of authority. Uh, he actually had more than likely more authority and more education than any jailer he ever had. The jailers he had, had a, they had authority from uh, the higher officials, but they didn't have the authority of God, which Paul did have. And, and Paul took another little old boy along with him while at, at, at Philippians, and listen to this. He said, Paul and Timotheus the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he had started work there at Philippi. Now what is a bishop? A bishop is a man with spiritual authority. He is a man that has got in the Bible got in whatever writings he had, the letters that Paul wrote, and in that day, there wasn't Bible like you and I have, but he was a man that got under the grace of God, and God revealed to him things, and he became a leader in the church. Now, he was a bishop. Now, just the regular saints, they were the people that were under the bishop, that listened to what the bishop said, and not just the bishop, the deacons. In that day, Paul had appointed deacons. What does a deacon do? A deacon is a man that's supposed to be set apart. He, he's supposed to rule well over his family. He's supposed to be a man that's been only married one time. He can't have been married more than one time because he has failed in ruling his house well if he failed in his marriage. So, Paul's make sure these people are set apart, well rulers, good rulers, to be able to rule uh, with the grace of God. Uh, and he says here in verse 2, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you speak for God today? Can you speak for God? Can you say to somebody, write a letter to them? and say, Peace be unto you from a God our Father. And did you, I, I went out this today, early, early this morning, I went outside and I stood under the stars for a while. And as I stood under the stars for a while, and I said the Lord's Prayer, which is in Matthew chapter 6 and uh, verse 9. It says, Our Father. And I look up into the stars into heaven. And I said, Our Father, my Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Man, he, he spoke those stars into existence. Jesus was with him. 
Jesus handled the stars too that are in the sky. He, God flung the stars out, if you please, and said, stay there and be for a lesser light uh, that you may illuminate uh, the earth uh, at night so people who have been out for a while in the dark uh, can see where they put their foot. And uh, so he, God made the stars for a reason. And there's many reasons. If you would study the stars, you would be amazed at why the stars are what they are and where they are. But let's get back into the book. Verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making a request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. The first day Paul entered into Philippi, he was accepted by somebody's in somebody's house. Jesus said to the disciples, when you go out, if you're accepted in a house, take your shoes off, go in, sit down, eat with them, feel free to use it like your own home, and enjoy yourself. And then when you leave, those people will be blessed because they blessed you. If you bless a man of God, you will be blessed. Find in your life, if you can possibly do it, find a man of God and bless that man. Help that man. Somebody who's doing something in Jesus Christ, somebody who's doing something in the gospel, somebody who's doing something, and, 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 and bless them, help them. Most people that are doing something are not wealthy folks. They're folks that need somebody to come alongside of them with a little... Uh, help along the way being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ wow there is a day coming that's called the day of Jesus Christ and that's the day that you meet him that's the last day of your life is going to be the day of Jesus Christ the last day of your own day or last day on this earth that you have above ground that you're breathing and talking and everything that last day is going to be the day of Jesus Christ for you to meet him face to face personally meanwhile you can meet him face to face personally through this Bible and this is the book in the beginning God said was the word and the word was with me and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and that's the Word of God, which we have, which we handle with our hands, which we read, which we can see, which we can feel. Uh, and this is the Word we have. Verse 7, Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in so much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, Ye all are partakers of my grace. God left, uh, Paul left some grace at Philippi. And that grace he left at Philippi that was growing. And it, they uh, were abounding. And look, he said, you, <laughs> uh, because I'm thinking of you in my heart, and I'm praying for you, I'm not feeling bad about these bonds I'm in. I'm in prison. And I'm not feeling bad about these bonds because I have more to do than to worry about these bonds. I'm, wor I'm concerned, concerned about you. And I'm thinking of you. And, and I know that you're thinking of me. And, and so, therefore, he's saying, I'm, I'm not so worried about these bonds. I'm actually, while I'm looking, I'm, I got somebody up there saying, Hey, Paul, listen to me. And while they're saying that, I really have my mind on you. And I'm praying for you, and I'm thinking of you. And that's keeping me in perfect peace. Hey, if you're thinking of others, you can be in perfect peace. If you're thinking only of yourself, when you get in bonds, you'll say, oh, me, wretched man that I am. Paul didn't say that. Paul didn't say, oh, me, wretched man I am. He got to thinking about other people. He got to praying for other people. And by doing that, it relieved him of his own personal uh, detainership. He was detained by the devil 
yet he wasn't obtained by the devil. He was detained but not obtained. He, uh, the devil couldn't obtain Paul, couldn't get in and catch a hold of him. And so uh, he said, even as it is meat for me to think of you. What is meat? That's something you eat. Now, he ate, Paul ate spiritually more than he ate physically. If you will eat spiritually more than you eat physically, you will be a happy human being. You have got to eat spiritual food. What is that? That's the Word of God. The Word of God. You have got to eat the Word of God. If you do not eat the Word of God, you will not grow in grace. You will not grow in peace. You will not grow in love. You will not grow in the Gospels of Jesus Christ if you don't get in them. You must get in the book. Wow. Uh, Phil, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Philippines. Uh, do you know how long it takes to read the book of, of, of Philippians? you know how long it takes to read it? Uh, I think 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes you can read the book of Philippians. If you did that one week, every day one week, or if you read it every morning before you went to work, read it every night when you got home from work, read it every morning and night for one week, seven full days, one week, you'll be read it fourteen times. Now in that fourteen times you will start to begin to understand what it's saying. If you don't do that, you will never understand what it's saying. If you do not get in the book, you'll never understand. It's all foreign to you. Foreign matter. You go to church on Sunday, you go to church on Wednesday, you sit down, you listen to the preacher, but you don't get in the book yourself, you won't make it. You don't get in the book yourself. You've got to get in the book. I am only where I am today because I've been in the book. I've been in the book. I stay in the book. I got in the book in 1972 and I've never got out. I stayed in the book. I stay in the book. Try to read a chapter or two every chance I get. Every chance I get, sit down and read something. Every chance I get, I carry a Bible in my back pocket. I carry a, a Bible, several Bibles in my truck. I carry several Bibles in my car. I, can't, I have there's nowhere in my house, nowhere, nowhere in my house that I can't pick a Bible up. If I go to the bathroom, I have a Bible there. If I have three bathrooms, I have three Bibles, in the, one in each bathroom. I have a, a Bible in the, everywhere that in my house that you go, there will be a Bible. You can reach up and get a Bible or a Bible book or something spiritual right there. Listen. You have got to absorb yourself in God's Word if you want to be God's man. Wow. You must do that. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. To what he's saying from the depth of the inner man, Jesus Christ. From the depth of this inner man, Jesus Christ. I long for you. I have good memories of you. I have good memories of you. Different ones in that little church that he started at Philippi. He had good memories of them. It was the Christian triumph. He was suffering, but he was in Christian triumph. Uh, he was a true Christian liver. He lived Christ in his life. You can't do that if you don't know Christ. First, you've got to ask Jesus, forgive you of your sin, come in your heart and save your soul, and begin to know Christ. And then the goal you will have in your life as a Christian, you'll have a goal. And that goal will be to be able to do exaltation of what Jesus is, who he is, what he says to you and how you are to perform. You can't do it if you don't get in it. Whatever job you have, I guarantee you, you have had to learn, and you've had to learn how to procure it and to make it where it would work. And well, I know some good, good, good insurance salesmen. They didn't get there 
by haphazard being a haphazard salesman. They got there by uh, studying, working, studying, working, studying, working, studying, working, and working at it, and get finesse, learn how the words to say, learn how to pull a person in to sign that paper to buy insurance they're selling. Well, God wants us to do the same thing with the Bible. Only He wants us to use the Holy Spirit to do the drawing. Use the Holy Spirit to do the pulling. We don't do the pulling. You let the Holy Spirit do the pulling. And work with people for God is my record. How greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, uh, which our Lord Jesus Christ, under the glory and praise of God. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the opposite of unrighteousness. Righteousness is clean thoughts. Righteousness is thoughts of godly things. Not, not, do you know why cuss words don't come out of my mouth? They're not in my heart. Cuss words don't come out of my mouth because they're not in my heart. What's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. And however you grow spiritually is what's going to come out of your mouth. Uh, do you work uh, to just to make money to pile it up for yourself? Why, you're an unhappy person. If you're working to help others, you're a happy person. The more you help others, the happier you become. Okay, well, I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the forbearance of the gospel. Remember now, here Paul is, he's in prison, <laughs> and he's, he's stuck in prison, but he's saying, look, don't you all think bad about it now. If this is forbearance for me. This is understood that God has got me here for a reason. And, and you know, I don't believe that, that, I don't believe Paul ever went to any prison he didn't win the jail to Jesus Christ. And those that were in the prison became a church. The church became a church in the prison. Why? Is there any better people to reach than those who are locked up behind bars, who are captive of the bars? Who had, Paul had a captive audience. Most of the time, he had a captive audience. Listen, the things that Paul was able to achieve in his life, he achieved many from in the prison bars. He had learned the that this is the college that he could go to and actually get parchment, get a pen, get a way to write, and write letters, get a way to stop, slow down, have something to eat. He, listen, I bet when he was walking down the road he didn't get three meals a day, or two, or one, or whatever they served you in prison. But he got meals in prison. <laughs> God provided him meals in prison. Hey, and God provided him with peace of heart and long-suffering and temperance and meekness and gentleness and kindness and, and in prison. He, listen, this was a, a highly educated man. This was a highly educated... Paul was a highly educated man and sat under the feet of Gamal. He was a, a highly... Listen, he had a powerful job when he was out crucifying the Christians. When he was out going across country, he had the authority of Caesar. He had great authority. He was a man of authority. And now here he is. He's in, he's in bonds, but he's not in bonds. He's, he was in chains, but not in chains. He was in places of uh, discomfort, yet not discomfited. <laughs> wow. What a place to be so close to God and to Jesus Christ that no matter what happens, you're not in those bonds that you're in. Listen to what he says in verse 12. Oh, wait a minute. Verse 10. 
that ye may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled, wow, being filled, listen to this, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. You know what you're going to be filled with? Whatever you feed yourself. You feed yourself with a bunch of TV junk, you're going to be filled with a bunch of TV junk. You feed yourself with some gospel of Jesus Christ, you can be filled with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you learned the words of the Bible? Can you take the King James Version Bible, open it up, and read a page in the book of, of Philippians and read a book, read a page and understand what it says. Read a verse and understand what it says. If you can't, you know what the problem is? You haven't got saved yet. When you get saved, God will give you the ability to understand. First thing I got at the age of 30 when I got saved after being drunk, alcoholic, out there drunk every night and and God saved me, I learned to understand what the book said. When I read it, I can understand it. Verse 12, But I would you should understand, brethren, the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the forbearance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. <laughs> hey, hey, do you know that when Paul was in bonds, he was there because the, uh, they had, the, uh, had come down from the palace. The guy in the palace said, put him in jail. And so he, he, he starts out already saying, it already is in the palace, you know, about me. And they already know about me. And they've gotten here in bonds now. From the palace on down to what? What did he say? I would that you understand the things which happened to me have fallen rather out for the abearance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all from the palace and in all other places. From the palace and all other places. That's in the prison. In the jailhouse. And all the other places. So he, he has got him now a captive audience. And all he has to do is, is be different than everybody else that's in jail. Uh, all the cussing, swearing, going on, raveling, fighting with each other and everything. And Paul comes in. He's meek. He's calm. He's, he's collected. He's, uh, he's talking about Jesus. And he's saying, hey, fellas. If you just do what I say, you won't be miserable in here. If you just do what I tell you, if you receive what I tell you about Jesus Christ and about God, you won't be miserable in this prison. Yeah, you can be in here and have a good time. I got a good friend, his missionary friend, has a college. It's called Titus Baptist College. You can find it at the website of faith.com Lagrange faith.com LaGrange Faith Baptist Church dot com LaGrange you can find uh, Titus Baptist College you can go to it for pennies pennies you can go to it for pennies you can go uh, by, uh, by disc uh, they will send you the disc if you want to sign up and you can get a four year degree from Titus Baptist College very easy uh, through that what you can afford is what you pay. What you can afford is what you pay. Uh, monetary things is not going to, to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to go on. Anyway, about my brother Dennis. He's the head of that college. He is a man that's given his life. You say, Brother Peter, how do you know that? I've watched his life. I've watched him grow spiritually. I watched him come. I watched him in the morning, at daylight time, before daylight, walk in the parking lot, all the way around, praying, asking God to give him, give him 
something. And God gave it to him. God has given it to him. I saw him quit a very, very lucrative job not knowing where his next payday was going to come from and having all kinds of things in front of him that were obstacles. And he said, I'm going to let God take care of those obstacles and I'm going to follow God. God has taken care of every obstacle. Has the man given of himself? Yes, he has. He's a man deserving of us to give to him our preeminence as well as to God through Jesus Christ is to give some to our brothers in the gospel. Verse 14, And many of the brethren in the Lord wax confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Now we see Paul in bonds. And because we see him in bonds, it makes us more able to speak the word and say, Hi, I'm not going to worry about it. They throw me in prison, they throw me in prison. I have a captive audience. I'll be the preacher in there. By the way, if I go to prison, I am going to be the preacher in the prison. I'm going to be the godly man. I'm going to be the man that uh, preaches the gospel in the prison. 15, verse 15, chapter 1. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of conditions, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in patience or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do receive ye and will rejoice, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supplication of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He's talking about a, two different types of salvation. He's knowing here that his working here in the prison, his salvation is going to grow. But he also knows if these guys will pray for him and everything, one of these days he'll be delivered uh, out of the prison, prison that he's in, the physical prison. Paul was not in a prison of the mind. He was not in a prison state of mind. He was in a, a state of mind that was free from being in a prison. He, he, didn't, he wasn't bound up by that. Uh, he approved of things that are excellent. He sincerely to the end approved of things that were excellent, that were the things of God, and without offense until the day of Christ. He said, don't be offensive. Don't take offense on yourself and don't be offensive. And so that's what he said to do then. And let's read on to verse uh, 10 and 11. Uh, excuse me, I've been there. I read to verse 19. Verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. He said, I don't care which it be. I don't care. If I live on, I'm going to show it. And if I die, I'm going to show it. People will know I died for the gospel's sake. And because I died for the gospel's sake, I became a martyr. And a martyr for Jesus is to live forever, not just in heaven, but your memory will live forever on the earth. And life's perils did not bother him. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what shall I choose? I want not. For I am in a strait between two places, having the desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. 
He's saying, I need to stay here for you. So I'm going to stay here for you. And I'm going to uh, preach to you. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to do what you need. And but, but I would love, he said. I knew a man, he said, about 14 years ago uh, that went to heaven. <laughs> and he said, and came back. And I was that man. And I'd sure love to go to that place. That place, he said, is so much better than this earth. But it's important for me to stay here. So he was here by choice. Paul was here. He chose. He said, uh, Jesus, go ahead. Take me back and put me back on the earth. And, and let me go ahead and fulfill what my life is supposed to fulfill. And that's what he did. He fulfilled what his life was supposed to fulfill before he died. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you. He's saying, God has showed me some things I'm going to show you. And when I show them to you, you follow them. Remember now, they didn't have this book we got sitting in front of us. They did not have this letter yet sitting in front of us. They were struggling Christians. They were, they were learning how to be Christ-like without having the proper paperwork, without having everything they needed. They had the words of Paul. And the words he left behind, the, the, he said, look, look, fellas, look. Look, he said, don't let it be mentioned among you anymore, this thing about fornication. This thing about running around with every woman and whatever. He said, that's not godly. You want to do be godly, don't do that. Let it, let, let's, look, let's separate from the world. He said, let's not, let's not be smoking and drinking and raveling. Let's not be doing that stuff. Now, this is what he's left these people with. He said, let's look like a godly group, a, a group of people, two or three men, some deacons and some, some uh, other men. He said, let's, let's do this. Let's separate from the world so people will see us separated from the world. Not doing every day what the other people are doing and what you used to do and what you were doing. Let's not do that anymore now. Let's do this. Hey, I tell you, in my younger life, it's funny, I didn't get saved until I was 30, but I saw my father. I've seen my father do miracles. I've seen him take a, uh, go to visit a house, win the people to the Lord, start a prayer meeting in the house once a week. Next thing you know, there's 25 or 30 people meeting in that house, having a little church, and growing in the Lord and doing Bible studies. I saw him do that time and time again. <coughs> and that's what he did. And that's what Paul, the apostle, was doing when he came into Philippi. That's what he was doing. When he came into Thessalonica, when he came into Ephesus, when he came into Galatia, when he came into uh, all the places that he came into, he started a work. And when he left, there was a work there that he started. And then he told those people, like Timothy here, he said, now you start a work. Now wherever you go, you start a work. Wherever you go, you start something. If there's anything in my life that's probably a failure, is that I am not doing as I saw my father do throughout the years. Did I used to do that? Yes, I did. If I am not doing what I used to do, I'm backslid in that area and I need to catch up on that. I need to get on the ball and get out and get some little home meeting started, don't I? See, the thing about it is, I can go over here to a brother in the Lord and get a little meeting started in his house and he knows people I don't know. And he'll bring the people he knows in and then they become Christians and followers of Jesus. And that's what we need to do. We need to do that very thing. God is speaking to me, myself, today, God is speaking to me about getting on the ball and to abide in the flesh because it's needful that I might win others. Look, 
And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance in the gospel. Verse 26 of chapter 1. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, <laughs> that you stand fast. You're standing fast. They say, I want to hear that you're standing fast in one spirit, in one mind, striving together for faith and the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversary, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same confidence which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. He had, Paul had a confidence in him that they were to see as a, as, a, as another human being just like them, but he had such a confidence in Jesus Christ that they were to see that his happiness was totally in Jesus Christ. And because it was, he was able to uh, follow what he needed to follow. Well, my friends, this is finishing up the 30 verses of chapter 1 of the book of Philippians. I'm going to go into chapter 2 of the book of Philippians on the next excerpt that I do. If you will look at the date of this excerpt, when you pull it up, you'll be able to find the next one to it by finding the date of it and pull up that date. I will see you next time in the next excerpt that you pull up. Now, I want you to know, if you happen to be on this and you're not settled in yet, and you have, you're hunting, you're looking for what God would have for you, get in the book and you'll find it. Get in the book and you'll find it. This is a little teaching I did here of 30 verses of chapter 1. And it's a recall, in a sense, of what Paul the Apostle did and can be again done. Can be done again. You may live in a place where if you start following Jesus, you get put in jail. Just remember, just because your location is different doesn't mean that your gospel is different. So do spiritual things the way God would have you do. My time is going to be come and gone for this segment. I'll be in chapter 2 on the next segment. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word.